It is 5.30. So I'll kick us off. My name is Jeff Sailing. I'm one of the founders at Startup NV. We are a incubator and accelerator program statewide, and we're dedicated to creating and growing an awesome and inclusive startup ecosystem throughout the state of Nevada. Uh, we've been around since uh, 2017. Uh, we've heard just a hair over 700 companies pitched to us, and we're about to hear a few more tonight. Um, about uh, 50 of those companies have been asked to join our accelerator program with 31 of them having raised just over $70 million since we started this process back in 2017. So we're about to hear from a, a few more of you tonight. Tonight is our pitch practice and pitch deconstruction meeting where anybody who signs up on the form that Maggie has put a link for in the chat um, can make a one minute pitch tonight. And everybody will get a chance to vote on all the one minute pitches, whether we have five or whether we have 40, uh, we'll pick the top three and they'll get the pitch for another three minutes. Um, and then you'll get some uh, feedback in front of the whole audience and hopefully helping you, but also as an example to everybody else who's interested in pitching for, uh, for, the, for the meeting tonight. Um, so I want to thank our sponsors, uh, Brex Card, and they offer a credit card to founders uh, that doesn't require a personal guarantee. And if you use our link, uh, brex.com slash startupnd, and you get approved, you get 500 bucks in your account uh, to start with. Normally, they offer that to us, and we just said, give it to the startup. So if you get a Brex card through that link, you'll get the 500 bucks. The City of Las Vegas has been a great sponsor of ours through the years. They give us a great place to work in downtown Las Vegas. And we also have a program with them for anybody who's coming through one of our programs to get co-working space for substantially less than the market price. So if you do want to take advantage of that or you want to find out more, reach out to Logan, who's our community development, community development manager in Las Vegas. He's also part of this call and you'll be hearing from him a little later tonight. You can reach him at logan at startupnv.org. And finally, uh, Glassboard Technology has been a consistent sponsor of ours on the finance side of things. They provide all of the special purpose vehicles and fund administrative software that we use when we make investments in the companies that come into our accelerator program and that get uh, chosen for investment in our angel and bee program, of which you're all a part. The investment window is now open. You can start applying for, uh, for the Angel NB $200,000 investment. Uh, I believe the window opened uh, earlier today or tonight. You can get at that through our angelnb.com website. Um, and at some point, there'll be a link for that dropped into the chat tonight. So uh, good luck to everybody who's pitching tonight. Um, as you'll note here, with uh, this is the process that we use to uh, help companies move from idea all the way through to revenue generation and scaling. Uh, through our incubator grow and v that you see on the left hand side of the slide in the feasibility phase our accelerator program in the viability phase moving into the scalability phase that's where we actually make an investment in companies through our our fund fund nv um, and generally also where angel nv makes their investment um, as one of the companies that that hopefully we're pitching tonight and will ultimately end up winning this competition uh, in the spring of next year we do have our, our six programs, which you're all probably familiar with, and I just briefly went over a minute ago. And then finally, some of the stats I just uh, recited, we, uh, as of the end of October, we're now up over 700 pitches heard um, and over 30 companies funded, uh, and we're just over $70 million raised through the companies or for the companies that have come through our programs. So if you're sitting here tonight wondering, is this worth it? Will this work? Um, well, I don't know what the answer is for you, but I know it's worked for a lot of companies. And if you stick with it um, and you apply yourself, at least with our program, we know that it, that it ultimately will work. And just to give you a taste of, of some companies that it's worked for, these are the companies that are currently in our program that are working their way through it um, and have, uh, are, have either received an investment or in the process of working their way through due diligence to receive an investment. Um, so thanks every, again for everybody for coming tonight. Um, Maggie's going to be your host for this evening. Uh, she's going to lay out the rules of the, the pitch competition or the, this one minute pitch process, um, tell you how it's going to work, how the voting is going to work. And between Maggie, Logan, and, and Audrey, and possibly Chuck, since I now see him in the panel, 
um, you're going to get some feedback um, on your pitches. So um, over to you, Maggie, you can lay out the rules of the road for the folks who want to pitch and hopefully everybody will understand what they need to do. So thanks again, everybody for coming out. Uh, so grateful for your spending your evening with us. Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming. And uh, so tonight is your first experience uh, with us for a one minute pitch. A one minute pitch is really tough. You have to make it interesting, but it's not very long. So uh, we included the link in the chat for you to sign up and I'm gonna go over it and then I'm gonna ask for a guinea pig. And I, last week somebody volunteered right when we were talking about it. So um, I love that enthusiasm. So it's a one minute pitch and we're going to give feedback on the very first one. And it was Chris Bulin who wants to go first. So he's got it. Um, Christopher, I'm sorry, I keep calling you Chris. Uh, my brother's name is Chris. So after the one minute pitch with the feedback, then we're just gonna go bang, bang, bang through the rest of the people that are on the list. And we are also adding them to a voting form. So once we've gone through all of the people who've signed up, um, then we will give general feedback um, to everyone. And it's usually things like, you focused on the product too much and you didn't give us all the information that we needed. So because that one minute is so short. Um, but after the vote, um, we will let you guys vote. That link will go into the chat as well. You'll vote on who you wanna hear more from. If you indicated that you do have your slides, then you will be eligible to do the three minute pitches. And then we'll take the three minute pitches one at a time with feedback after each one. Okay, any questions at this point? I'm gonna watch the chat for a second. All right, Chuck, are you on board with us? Understanding what's happening here? And we have Bill Sucker Bear too. So if yes, you just, you, you ready, Chuck? Okay. Yeah. And Bill, you ready? Okay. So Chris, go ahead and unmute yourself. And I think that I can, let's see, let me go over to Christopher. I see one hand raised, Raymond Hall. All right, Ray, what's your question? I was just wondering if I can pitch the one minute thing. Uh, yes, there is a link in the chat. Please go back for it. It's the link to sign up. And we're just going to go in order after did, Christopher does his. I did sign in. I apologize. Okay. So here is the link to the form to sign up. All right, Christopher. Thank you. Um, I am keeping time with my phone. So can I start? And so Christopher, um, as I said, I'm, I'm keeping time with my phone. And so I will unmute and cut you off at one minute. Not a problem. I'll probably be under it. So my name is Christopher Bielan, and I am the founder of Proven PCI. PCI stands for Payment Card Industry, and this software market is expected to reach 43.76 billion by 2025. The SMB market is currently underprotected and under-resourced, relying on legacy solutions for cybersecurity. The average cost of a data breach is 149,000. Our solution is PCI in a box, an all-in-one cybersecurity suite for small and medium businesses within reach at half the price of Starbucks coffee per day. Our team is a mix of cybersecurity and payments experts with 10 years of 20 years plus, and we are seeking two and a half million for our seed round to build out the rest of our software, grow our sales and our support staff. Done. Okay, yeah, you're done. <laughs> that, was, that was pretty quick. That was less than 30 seconds. Holy cow. Yeah, so um, Chuck, do you have any comments? We asked them to cover, well, actually we didn't, uh, if they watch the videos, we asked them to cover problem, solution. Oh, there's the timer. Um, yeah, uh, can you hear me? We do hear you, Chuck, go ahead. Okay, well, uh, I appreciate the enthusiasm with which he presented it, but I'm uh, frankly focused on enterprise solutions. So I don't know that I'm a good commentator on his, approach, his uh, uh, solution. Okay, fair enough. Uh, Bill? I wasn't sure I heard much about market or any traction to date. And um, we just finished our MVP. So we have, I mean, we've got letters of intent, but again, I didn't cover, I mean, I actually didn't know what to cover. So I apologize. So I just threw it together. No worries. No worries. Uh, just as a general, uh, that and, uh, you know, the business case, how are you going to make money, I think, are key issues to cover. 
Sure. Uh, Logan, were you able to listen? I was, and I caught, I'm pretty sure I caught it. I'm, I'm, I'm busy also fielding questions, but uh, Christopher, uh, good job in covering a lot of stuff in 30 seconds. Next time someone gives you 30 seconds, take the full minute. There were some things I, you could have flashed out a little bit more with a minute, including you, uh, you've you got a focus segment that needs just a little bit of uh, more information for me to understand as a person who doesn't know the industry, what exactly is the fair area you're focusing on. So okay. good job on running through that. You ran through some of the strength points and, some, and you know the market, the market size, which is a big thing. But uh, and next time you got a one minute pitch, take up the full minute and uh, flesh out the, the, the problem solution a little bit more. Just a little bit more. No, you're good. I, I typed it out ahead of time. So that's why I, they're, they read faster than I, most. Okay, and Christopher, um, I heard you talk about the market size and you almost led with that, but I wasn't sure what the problem was. You mentioned that PCI has to do with charge cards. But I, I wasn't getting the notion that there is um, a cybersecurity problem until you said that right after SMB. Now, most people do know what SMB is, but not everybody does. And so in a one minute pitch, you have to try to avoid using jargon and acronyms uh, because you're trying to make an impact. Okay. And the impact could be just the simple statement that there are compliance rules that many small, medium-sized businesses don't realize when it comes to security for their charging. And okay. we have a solution. All right. <clears throat> okay, but I did get the market size and I got your ask and what your use of funds would be. So um, you, you didn't hit all the targets, but you hit many of them. Okay, all right. Okay. Um, now we have our people signed up. We're just gonna go in order. And what happens now is that um, we're going to do a one minute pitch and then all the judges should be taking notes um, on each person. Now it's only a minute, it's not gonna take that long, but if you can jot down any glaring misses, stuff that's not there and what they've done right in their short time. So Noel, you're asking about the one minute pitch video advice. We don't actually have a video on that. We had the storytelling was the first session back on October 12th. And that was the idea of you need to tell a story when you have a really short amount of time to pitch. Um, a 10 minute pitch, a five minute pitch, they follow a formula. But when you're trying to do it as a one minute pitch or a two minute pitch, um, you really have to create a hook. You have to tell a, a story that makes people lean in and say, tell me more. Okay, so first up I have Kevin. So Kevin, do you want to unmute? So as okay. soon as you say your name, I will start the timer. Good evening, my name is uh, Kevin Cabral. I've worked uh, in construction or software my entire life. It's uh, crazy the sheer amount of paperwork that's necessary on a construction project. Historically, all that data is recorded using Excel. Excel can be unfit for agile business practices and complicated, and it doesn't answer all the questions stakeholders are asking. I've seen companies bankrupt from inaccurate data analysis and poor stakeholder relations. A McKinsey study found the construction industry is among the least digitized and the most ripe for process disruption, representing a $180 billion industry. This led me to develop Amicus. It's an enterprise solution that can be used at different levels of a company to record and analyze experiential data and build a solid system for the organization to increase stakeholder confidence. Amicus focuses on those ancillary functions that are time consuming, but have a large impact on the success or failure of each project. At, Am at SyncForge, we don't develop software, we develop trust. Okay, Kevin, um, your nice tagline would have been cut off if I were able to mute you. <laughs> All right, now we're moving on. Um, Amicus, but your company is called Singforge, is that correct? Yes. Okay. All right, next up we have Angie Crowther with Champion Education Services. All right, Angie, whenever you're ready. My name is Angie Crowther. 
and I had a career as a school counselor in the United States, India, and the United Arab Emirates. Sadly, as I've worked with thousands of young people all over the world, I have observed that many kids and teenagers are suffering. Because of cost, most young people around the world do not have access to therapists, school counselors, or social workers. So to solve this problem, we ask the question, can a video game save the world? Champion is developing a single player video game that teaches universal social and emotional skills. We aim to uh, we are in the research stage and are asking for $100,000. We will expand first to India, China, and then the Middle East. Okay. Well, you definitely got it done in time. That was um, 16 seconds short. So Ooh. you had more time. I had more time. Thank you. Okay. Noelle, are you ready? I'm ready. Here we go. Ever since I traveled abroad in college, I've been fantasizing about living outside the U.S., but life happens and the fantasy became more of a, well, fantasy. That was until 2020 when we all realized we could work from anywhere. And what that was a game-changing realization for me. Could I spend nine months a year in Vegas and three in Italy? There are over 10 million people who identify as digital nomads and that number is growing by the second. That's why we created Alt Casa because being a tourist is expensive. And let's face it, it's not financially smart to live in an Airbnb for three months every year, even if it is Italy. With Alt Casa, we acquire beautiful, affordable homes, split them into eight fractions, upgrade and furnish them, and then sell them in gorgeous move-in ready pieces. With AC, you have real equity ownership. Eventually, we want to build a community of Alt Casa customers around the world so you can buy, sell, receive service, and swap homes with other owners on our platform, allowing you to live anywhere while building wealth. Perfect, you had two seconds left. Woo! All right. All right, next up we have Tim Gerling. Well, hi everyone, my name is Timothy Gerling. And I thank you for your time. Time, it is what people wish we had more of. Allow me the privilege to introduce to you ShopQuest. ShopQuest is a grocery store application giving you the fastest route through that store from product, from a list that you entered. Think of it as a Google Maps or a MapQuest, if you will, through the store based off a product you need. The problem is time. Is Hello? That it? Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's breaking up. Uh, the problem is time. Is that People your spend tech an life? average of 53 hours per year grocery shopping? Money. 43% of users, 43% of people use coupons and they don't redeem their digital coupons at checkout. Relationships. I'm sorry, that's, is this still on? Yes, we were hearing you. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. What was your right, perception? Yeah, were you sorry. thinking that we were disconnected? Yeah, I'm at, so I'm at work. And it keeps breaking up on my end. Okay, and you're on the phone, not on a computer? Correct. Okay, yeah, that's very yeah, hard. I get terrible know. reception out here. <laughs> All right. Um, well, thank you, Timothy. I'm yeah, next... I apologize. That's okay, sometimes the tech limits us. Uh, next up, we have Manny Garcia with Sherman Industries. Manny, let me allow you to talk. Hi, I'm Manny Garcia. I invented the internationally patented Wall Connect TV outlets. The global home theater market was worth 9.15 billion US dollars in 2020, and the total revenue is expected to grow at a rate of 14.4%. <clears throat> and, after, and after we make that new home theater investment, it only takes one or two changes before we have wires hanging down the wall all over again. The solution is the Wall Connect TV outlets, a simple do-it-yourself data outlet system that organizes all of your wiring needs. I'm putting it all in the kit, the last outlet you'll ever need. I'll launch in franchise hardware stores and electrical wholesalers. Our kit will have an MSRP of $100 and a map of $69. I estimate the cost for marketing, tooling, certification, and initial product, initial production to launch the Wall Connect TV outlets will be 200,000 and have a timeline of six months. 
We're offering discounted pre-orders and investments begin at $10,000. Thank you. Oh, that was perfect timing, Manny. I stopped with one second left. Next up, we have Margie Traxler with Grain Free Mamas. I think I already enabled you to speak, so you should be able to just okay. unmute yourself. In 2004, my then six-year-old daughter bent over screaming. I thought her appendix had burst, and we rushed off to the emergency room only to find out that all, everything was normal. What we found out was that the combination of wheat and sugar was burning little holes in her intestines. Um, and we went to the store and all of a sudden it was an unfriendly place. We couldn't buy any baked goods without compromising her health and, and nothing um, was worse than that for my child. And so I put my science education to work and I developed a whole new way to make baked goods. Grain Free Mamas is a food tech consumer product goods company. Our products are um, the MSRP is $7.99. The, the industry is robust. The global prepared flour industry is at $25.49 and billion dollars. The team is ready. The people are ready. We're raising $600,000 in pre-seed run and then $1.5 million next year to get going. Thank you. Okay, Margie, you had six seconds left. Uh, next up, we have Andrew Ha with the Museum of Cookies. Okay, Andrew. Hello, everyone. My name is Andrew Ha, and I want and I am an artist, and I want to open up a Museum of Cookies in the Las Vegas Arts District. Um, uh, so a, bit, a little bit about my business. Museum of Cookies is a uh, museum where you, you eat cookies while looking at minimalist pop, minimalist art, as well as um, uh, art that has to do with social and political um, issues that are going on in the world. Um, uh, there's a growth outlook of uh, and TAM of 164.85 million, and uh, we're forecast to sit 20 million in five years. I see that, that I, as an artist, can compete and and uh, get investment through um, uh, through you guys as Museum of Ice Cream and Meow Wolf. My competitors have done the same thing, but I intend to do things even better with um, uh, with uh, live music events as well as uh, doing a lot of uh, uh, of outreach on social issues like fem feminism, uh, Black Lives Matter, as well as you know the Hong Kong pro democracy movement, and uh, that's that's about it. Uh, they do a good job. <laughs> so you were right there on the buzzer, Andrew. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, next up, we have uh, Joseph Del Rivo. Okay, great. Yeah, my name is Joseph Del Rivo. I'm a software developer for the last twenty years. Uh, the last 10 of that has been building uh, enterprise applications, primarily for startups and some enterprise companies. Um, the, the problem I, I identified was that most of the clients, I built what they wanted, I built more than what they wanted, but they couldn't succeed because they couldn't afford to market the application that they had envisioned. Uh, so I decided I better figure out a way to build sort of a scalable system to help myself and my clients uh, promote their uh, products and services. Um, and so I've built an application that collects uh, millions of tweets every day and analyzes the uh, tweets and the people posting in order to generate um, that it vets the different accounts and creates what people talk about as far as like influencers. But in my case, the system is finding who it believes are influential accounts. Um, okay, Joseph, you got to stop. Okay. Okay. Uh, next up, we have Raymond Hall from TNFS, uh, New Platform Tech. Okay. My name is Ray Hall. I met you guys a couple years ago. We weren't doing too well with that. So what we did was in the last four years, we developed a, a mobile app for singers, songwriters, and their followers. The first problem in this vast digital world, singers and songwriters must pick the right app to register on to build their brand and earn income. This opens up a bigger door of problem because the apps that are paying money, YouTube, Spotify, Pan, uh, 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 Pandora, uh, um, uh, and Amazon Music do not cater to singers and songwriters who are make who don't make minimum wage from their streams. Our solution: build an app that allows singers and songwriters to register from anywhere, allow the followers to vote 
for the content that the singers and songwriters put up so the followers earn money. This voting activity creates clicks per thousand, it creates cost per revenue, uh, cost per thousand revenue for singers and songwriters. Okay, Ray. Money. Gotta cut you off there, Ray. Okay, so that is 10 people that signed up. And I know that we have 20 in the room. So what's happening with the rest of you? Has everyone pitched who wants to pitch? It's good practice. Brandon, okay. Um, what's the name of your company, Brandon? The we mentality. Clock is ready. Whenever you say your name, I will start the timer. Brandon Ward from the we mentality. Have you ever been part of a team that performed under expectations, but you knew they can be better? How long did the team suffer? How many losses did they take? And what was the cost? You see, many teams suffer for far too long simply because they refuse to take action. And that's where the we mentality comes to the play. We help organizations reduce employee turnover and retain top talent. One of our greatest abilities is implementation. We've been fortunate enough to find and help build team performances both professionally and personally. As certified DISC and motivator practitioners, we would love to bring a, our new innovative approach to organizations and small businesses across the Vegas Valley. We teach teams adaptability, how to understand behaviors and effective communication in the workplace. You see, with this approach, we build synergy and increase productivity. Many Fortune 500 companies already utilize this method, and we would like to give you the opportunity to do the same. Whether it's a big business or large businesses, you can compete as long as you have the right strategies in place. So- Thank you, Brandon. Yes, ma'am. Time's up. Thank you. Okay. Um, do we have anybody else? Should I just call on people? Like Alan, what's your project? <clears throat> okay, Greg is remote without a microphone and he can't mime his pitch. <laughs> Okay, we'll catch you next time we do this. All right, Alan, are you ready to go? Okay, we're not gonna force you to do it, LB. Did you see my note? Um, whose note, LB? Oh, no, I missed yours, sorry. What did you tell me? Oh, you're not far enough along in your minimum viable product? I'm still developing everything and it's, it's all gonna stay a monopoly. There's no competition in my space. I'm not ready to play the hand yet, sorry. Okay, no problem. All right, well, in that case, then we will just um, put these pitches aside for a moment and we'll get some feedback from our judges. In the meantime, Audrey, if you're able to put in the link for the people who did pitch so that we can vote on who we want to hear a three minute pitch from, remember you're gonna vote for three. So each of you who gets the link can vote for three. You can vote for yourself. You can vote for two others. You can't do three votes for yourself. <laughs> it's a yes, no poll. So um, you can vote for up to three. You don't have to vote for three. Give me one second. Okay. So- Is this um, gonna be in the chat, in the chat, uh, Maggie? Yes, it will be yes. in the chat. In the meantime, um, I'm going to go to, let's see, do we still have Bill Slickerbeer here? I'm going to go to Bill first and ask for your general impressions about the pitches and what people should focus on. Okay, so overall, almost everybody stated a problem or a solution in some way or another. They were, some were more clear, some were not. Um, you basically problem, get it in one sentence, solution, one sentence. Then you want to, uh, um, what almost all of them didn't do with maybe two or three was, was cover the market. In other words, it's a billion dollar market. It's a hundred million dollar market. Uh, what the kind of business model, i.e. how are you going to make some money? And then uh, what do you need in order to do this? The ask in general, um, there was only one, I thought. Am I allowed to name them? Sure. Mamas that got close, uh, but she still missed uh, the business model as to how she was going to make money, but she pretty much covered everything else. 
So that's that's my, my two cents. It's it's and also I would say be uh, more conversational. Don't be in a big hurry because you're talking to somebody in the elevator, right? Right. Okay, um, Chuck. I know you're an enterprise guy, but in listening to these pitches. Do you have any general advice that would enable them to do a better job next time? Remember, it's only one minute. So the idea is really just to get them to have their audience say, tell me more. Yes, um, I, I would suggest that you be clear on the problem you solve for your customer, right? That, that, that is something that I generally see uh, from early stage companies. Uh, they tend to focus on their technology features more so than the problem they solve with their customer. Uh, and uh, the one that I thought that uh, I'm interested in hearing more about was actually the first one, Kevin Cabral. I thought uh, that, or maybe he was the second, was that it was interesting. Um, and uh, some of you, I couldn't figure out what you did. So you need to work on what it is you're doing for your customers. Thank you, Chuck. Uh, Logan, are you available? I, I am. I have been uh, responding to emails and letting people in the room, so it's minimal the amount of uh, listening was good. Overall, well done. I think that uh, most of you guys touched base on the problem and solution. Uh, some of the things that may not have been touched base, some of you had said, like, uh, this is a giant market or, or you had a big number for the TAM, but not really focusing on what your market is, like how big is this investment opportunity for, you know, for us versus, you know, the huge ecosphere of whatever market you're in. Um, but other than that, reiterating the points that uh, Chuck and Bill made um, and, uh, you know, it, with uh, keep practicing on the one minute pitches with time and uh, doing it over and over again, you get really smooth at going through the main points, problem solution, market opportunity, business model, et cetera. So good job, overall, well done. Okay, so uh, now I'm going to say a few words. I got a good picture from Grain Free Mamas because she started with her daughter doubled over in pain. Okay, so painting a picture in the beginning is really a good idea, okay? You can make it relatable. And then why was she bending over like that? Also, I got a good picture from Angie Crowther about her being a teacher for a long time and how kids um, have a hard time getting to therapy in other countries. Um, Noel Hurst made me want to go to Italy for three months. I wasn't quite feeling the pain with the sink forge, um, but I know that it's a problem. Um, let's see, the cookie museum. I didn't, I had a hard time following what you were saying there, Andrew. Um, so I know you're talking really fast and I think that could be part of the problem. And I think that you could make a really nice hook by just talking about cookies. Wouldn't you like a cookie now? I mean, you could really make it more, um, more intriguing for the listener. We do have the link, correct, Audrey, in the chat? Yeah. Yes, it is in the chat right now. Okay, so, so far four people have voted. Please continue to vote. Uh, judges, you're welcome to vote as well. And in the meantime, I would say for in, in a one minute pitch, even though Bill wants to understand how big the market is, that can really just be one sentence. Because if you're solving a problem that people can relate to, it's a pain point that they understand, then that's really just an anecdote. And would you believe it's a $28 billion problem? or a problem that occurs in this $28 billion industry. So, and Noel did put into the chat a link to um, last year's storytelling video. It's a good one. Um, that fella actually kind of goes through the process of creating a one minute pitch where you have to touch on these various things, but you need to make it an arc of a story and he actually tells you that for a one minute pitch, it's about a hundred words, but you get really good at this when you take the time to write it out and then practice it. And it won't be the same every time. It's not, you don't have to be wooden about it, but you do have to know exactly the points that you wanna to touch on in a one minute pitch. 
And you can also practice your three minute pitch. <laughs> Um, to me, before you do any kind of a talk or presentation, you should practice at least 20 times. And the more you practice it, the better you'll get. And then just like Danielle said a couple of weeks ago, she's like, practice, practice, practice. And let's see. Okay. Uh, we have nine people who voted now and we still have 28 people in our meeting here. So, um, Okay, Ray, are you not able to click through to the links? Uh, vote here, oh, I see it, my bad. <laughs> my, my, my bad, sorry about that. That's okay, but I'm glad you voted for yourself, you should. Well, I, I was voting for those other people as well, but it wants me to sign into Google. I voted for the, the young lady that was talking about her daughter and the guy that uh, had a problem with his mic, I think. Oh yes, that was uh, Tim, I believe. Tim Gurley. Yeah. So I, I voted for the young lady that was talking about her daughter. The issue with that in the in the gentleman that had the uh, issue with the mic and myself. Okay, um, Audrey, if you can make that vote for him, that would be great. In the meantime, um, Chris, how are you doing? Are you ready to do your one minute pitch over? Because no, the people don't get to count on the very first one. So they're going to be judging you on this one. Christopher? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Would you like to do it again? My one minute again? Yes. Okay. <laughs> oh, boy. I should have been typing it instead of filling this in. Um, <laughs> so my name is Christopher Bielen, and I'm the founder of Proven PCI. PCI stands for the payment card industry, and this software market is expected to reach 43.76 billion by 2025. The small medium business market is underprotected, under-resourced, and underserved. Uh, they're relying on currently legacy solutions only. PCI has long been considered a check the box and revenue generating activity without consideration of the risks involved in the payment industry. In the current environment, when merchants complete a PCI questionnaire, they're simply providing the right answers to avoid non-compliance fees, regardless of whether they comply or not. The average cost of data breach is approximately $149,000, and 94% of attackers target credit card data. Our solution is PCI in a box, an all-in-one cybersecurity suite for small to medium businesses that automates the questionnaire, providing proof. Our revenue model to generate revenue is reoccurring revenue through subscription-based targeting the payment providers, and then they'll resell to the small merchants. That's it, Christopher. Okay. Okay. Um, it seemed like you took a big pause at 30 seconds again. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I think I run out of air. Oh, okay. <laughs> I gotta right, remember so, to breathe. Yes, everybody, let's remember to breathe. It's, <sighs> yes, it's nerve wracking a little bit, but it's not, it's not the end of the world. It's just you telling your story. Yeah, I know. Okay. Um, yes, LB, you were right. If they didn't pitch, you can't vote for them. Um, but everybody who's on the list did pitch. And let's see, did we get Raymond Hall on there and Brandon Ward? Yep. Okay, so now we have 16 votes. Christopher, did you get a chance to vote? I know I called on you and kind of out of yeah. order. Yeah, I voted already for everybody. Okay. All right, Audrey? Can you share yes. your screen and show us what the results are? Sure. Yes, so I think you're gonna have to scroll across and we're gonna have to try to figure out. So it looks like Margie, definitely. Okay, so Margie, great. And, and did all of these that... people say they had slides? I have slides, but um, how do I, are you, gonna, are you gonna share my screen? How does that work? Yeah, just let's, hold on. I'm glad you have slides. Who else, who's in second place? The next one is Christopher with Proven PCI. And then it looks like we have a tie for third. You gotta scroll across and too and see if there's any more. No, yeah, it's just these three. Andrew Ha, Noel, Angie, and Kevin are all tied for third with seven votes each. Oh, wow. There's four that are tied for third. Angie and Noel and Andrew? Angie, Kevin, Noel, and Andrew. 
Okay, Maggie, so can good. I make a suggestion? Yes. I'll forfeit if somebody else needs to go for the seven minutes for the seven. Uh, that was Christopher speaking? Yeah. Thank you, Christopher. Okay. I mean, I already did my original pitch with you guys already, so. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay, so now we're down to one, two, three, four, five. What time is it? It's only 6.16. All right. Is everybody cool with listening to these pitches for three minutes each? Okay. All right, then let's um, go with the highest vote getter, which was Margie. All right, Margie, go ahead and share your slides. And we will, again, begin the timer when you are sharing and you say, I'm Margie Traxler with? I'm Margie Traxler with Grain Free Mamas Incorporated. We're the next evolution of baked goods. What happened was in 2004, my then six-year-old daughter, who's pictured with me, uh, bent over screaming. She was six, she was six, and I thought her appendix had burst. We rushed to the emergency room only to have all the tests come back negative. And so we went home with no answers. A couple of weeks later, we found a doctor who diagnosed the problem, which was the combination of wheat and sugar that were burning holes in her intestines. And that set me on a path to create. And I used my science education. Um, the problem, so the solution, I'm going to tell you the solution first, and I'm going to keep going on the problem as we go through. So Grain Free Mamas has crepes, pizza crust, cookies, and muffins, and we're differentiated in that we're edible grasses free, which is gluten, grain, and sugar free. We're organic. Um, we're also no artificial flavors, colors, preservatives. We're also botanical nut free, which is important because botanical nuts or molds cause problem in the digestive tract. The market that we're in is really two segments. So the global prepared flour mixes and then global gluten-free pizza crust, which are both robust markets. We started with the soft launch of our pizza crust and our crepe mixes, um, just to build an early brand awareness. We've met with 47 retailers, including seven of the top 10. Uh, they love our products, but they needed us with a distributor. And right when the pandemic started, we won Kehi's uh, trendsetter golden ticket. And then shortly after that, we won the Next Generation Innovation Showcase. The team that we have together is robust and ready to go. The, oh, it skipped slides. Let me go backwards. So now I want to go the rest of the time and I want to talk to you about our consumer profiles. Up to 60% of consumers have digestive issues. And yet when they go to the grocery store, there's nothing they can buy in the baked goods that do not compromise their health. And they have to choose thrive over survive. It's a big problem. And it was there in 2004 and it's there, but we're ready to fill that gap. And that's what I wanted to talk to you with the, with the pandemic going and the causes of inflammation, the elevated inflammation greatly exacerbating your chance to have so many problems with the coronavirus, the time is now. The investment that we're looking for is 600,000 right now. We have people we're talking to, we're super close on that. But then also we're gonna be getting 1.5 million, which, which will cap us really at 2 million. That'll allow us to file for our proprietary blend patents to get our product out there regionally and then nationally and um, get these products in the hands of the people that need them. Thank you so much. Um, we invite you to join us as an investor. Okay, good on the time, Margie. You had five seconds left. Oops, see? Oops, okay. Sorry. All of the panelist experts can unmute and I'll just call on you really quickly. So, um, Bill? Oh, I love this pitch. Um, the one thing that stood out, you hit the problem, you hit the solution, um, you showed a competition on the slide, so you covered that. The one thing I really loved in marketing, it isn't just how big the market is, who is your customer? And you, you went after the persona of the customer, the type of person you were targeting. Totally awesome. And throughout the rest of it, you hit the team, you hit the ask, you hit the business model by showing margins on the slide, uh, and then inventory, which is obviously connected back to the ask. Wonderful. Okay, Logan? Uh, also, good job on that. Um, I think that you looped it all together pretty 
pretty beautifully. You're pretty specific. And I also, um, just like in your one minute, the hook, uh, you, you know, you had here is a problem that you are actually addressing with a market solution. So I, I, uh, that was a pretty excellent, um, I, and I apologize, I can't give much more. I am on the technical end of trying to make sure that everyone that is attending can get into the meeting. But uh, okay. well done, any touch most of the uh, points. All right, is Chuck still with us? Yes. Hi Chuck, uh, I know it's not your bailiwick retail, but um, any no, no, it was it was a very good presentation. The issues that I noted though, the 60% number, I felt there was a potential credibility issue there. It wasn't substantiated and I questioned it being so high. And the other issue I would have looked for was more about your go-to-market strategy. Otherwise, very good. Okay, and Margie, my question was that you said you were waiting until you were $2 million into your investment before you were filing any patents. So, does that mean that you don't plan to spend to actually sell anything until you get your patents in? Because that's a lot of investment with nothing to show as a return or any kind of traction. Yeah, I actually misspoke on that. We're filing for the patents um, probably within a couple of weeks. Okay, overall good job and excellent on the time. All right, so next up is, Audrey gave me the order. <laughs> Thank you, Andrew. Okay, so how do I how do I share screen? Um, if you move, you do have slides, correct? Okay, Andrew, we're going to move on to the next person and come back to you. Okay, that's why. All right, Angie, that means you're up next. And Angie, I don't think I mentioned your company name <laughs> when you did your one minute pitch. It's Champion Educational Services. Yes, thank you. No problem. My name is Angie Crowther, the founder of Champion Educational Services, and we offer gamified social and emotional learning. I had a career as a school and college counselor in the United States, India, and the United Arab Emirates. And in my work with, over, with thousands of students, I have observed that youth and children around the world are suffering with stress, depression, anxiety, and other mental health concerns. And unfortunately, there is a lack of preventative services like school counselors, social workers, and therapists. And even more of an obstacle is that there are financial restraints that um, because of poverty, many children do not have access to the, the uh, small amount of mental health services that do exist. So given that problem, can a video game save the world? Research shows that video games are uh, correlated with increase, increases of social emotional skills like teamwork, decision-making and creativity. And because of that, Champion is gamifying social and emotional learning by developing a mobile game that will cost approximately two US dollars per download, which is an affordable cost for many people around the world. It's single player, it's fun and engaging, and the social and emotional learning, the skills that the children will learn will lead to increased mental health, healthy and resilient relationships, and the ability to help solve our world's biggest problems. Our roadmap and projected revenue because of low media costs, low cost per install, little to no competition and enormous potential market, our plan is to roll out first in Mumbai to expand to greater India and then move to China and the Middle East. In Mumbai specifically, uh, India has the largest group of uh, people under the age of 25 in the world, 600 million young people. In Mumbai specifically, there are 3 million children and adolescents aged 5 through 19 in Mumbai, and they are digital natives. There's, 60, as there's projected 60% internet saturation by the year 2025. I have gathered a team of experts in their field and combined we have experience in nine startups. So we're ready to go. Uh, the ask is $100,000 to pay for 12 months of the salary equipment and operations for the game development plan. We are in the research phase, which will be for the next three to six months. And then after that, 
we will be ready to um, take that $100,000 for developing characters, setting the, the, uh, the storyline, the timeline, and also do the game and software development. Okay, Angie, you're all out of time. Ugh, okay, that's so nerve wracking. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it is, but practice makes perfect. Okay, Bill, do you have some feedback? Angie, I thought you did pretty well, actually. Um, your your problem um, may, you, you probably could reduce a little bit of time there, get to your solution a little quicker. Um, I like the numbers on the, uh, the market, you know, the 600 million that are less than 25, 3 million that are between the ages of 5 and 19 and how they're focused on on the internet and therefore gaming. Uh, the biz model, little shy, you covered it in a way by saying $2 uh, per, per download. The team uh, was there, ask, here's where I'm gonna say a word of caution. Salary turns investors off. Be very careful about how you, how you project that. You, if it's an initial investment, for sure. Farther on down the line, not so much. Um, one thing I would also suggest on the ask for, for the purposes of the presentation on a slide is uh, make your ask uh, presented in percentages, you know, with some numbers showing either numbers or percentages, the total amount, 100,000, 30% here, 20% there, that kind of thing. And it looks like most of it was, was dev anyway, based on the presentation, but overall a good job. Thank you so much. I took detailed notes on what you said. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chuck, do you have some feedback? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, your presentation was extremely clear. And what I liked the most was you established your credibility in this space early on. Uh, so I would immediately said, okay, here's an expert, knows what she's talking about. And I would, uh, in fact, uh, ask for a meeting to learn more. Very good job. Wow, thank you so much. Logan, I'm gonna skip you because every time I ask you, you tell me you're busy doing other things. So I'm just <laughs> gonna jump, jump to me. Um, Angie, again, I thought you did a good job. You did establish your credibility. You spent 45 seconds on the problem. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's a, a pretty well understood problem. So you don't need to spend quite so much time on it. Um, the $2 did seem like a reasonable price, but how are you going to reach those people? How are those kids? Or is it the parents? I'm not sure who the customer is. How are you gonna to get to them so that they wanna spend the $2 on your software game? I love that, thank you. And I have an answer, so I'll add it to my presentation. Okay. <laughs> All right. And I wanna just draw everybody's attention to the chat because Christopher, while he gave up his slot to do his longer pitch, he has invited everybody to a lunch and learn that he's hosting, I think it is tomorrow, um, about the um, the issues with credit cards and what you probably want to learn more about is that there are compliance rules and fines associated with non-compliance for credit card merchants. After Angie, Andrew, how are you doing? Angie, I'm going to put you back to an attendee now. Um, Andrew, are you still with us? Have you been able to figure out how to share something? Then our next presenter will be Kevin. All right, so I'm Kevin Cabral and uh, founder of SyncForge and I made an uh, enterprise application called Amicus. And um, the problem that we have, uh, Amicus uh, Construction provides pipeline construction companies with a cost-effective enterprise level construction technology. The problem that we're solving is uh, pipe uh, construction projects, particularly those that go over distance, that's that's what I focus in on, uh, have a significant number of stakeholders that you have to report to. The difficulty is that most uh, pipeline companies do this in Excel, and um, that is problematic. So the problems that we're solving are stakeholders require timely and detailed information. Um, Change orders are not approved because there is no evidence of completion of the change order. Uh, so you don't have uh, inspection test plans or audits or um, uh, documentation. 
uh, shutdowns or suspensions to, due to unrecorded information, the states and the EPA and OSHA, along with uh, uh, federal agencies, uh, will shut down projects. I've been part of that where uh, we weren't allowed to uh, bore underneath roads anymore because of permitting issues. Um, poor analytics, limited ability to leverage field level data. Um, this occurs when uh, because everything is in Excel, there's no central repository to leverage the next time you're trying to develop a bid. Uh, legacy business models and uh, data capturing methods uh, need to establish trust, increase construction project reporting complexity and the associated cost. So the solution is Amicus. It's a full service enterprise solution. We have uh, reporting, job costing. Uh, this is all done, ready to go safety, environmental, crew equipment, risk management, and estimating. Um, so why now? Um, because uh, my experience uh, with over 15 years in uh, pipeline construction and uh, significantly more in software, um, we need a, a way to accurately uh, uh, capture field level data. Uh, we need to increase stakeholder trust improve operational efficiencies, reduce cost, increase institutional knowledge, skill sets and quality. So what are we looking at? Market potential. Um, so anything researched this week has listed uh, utility system construction, which is the industry I uh, focus on, is uh, about $180 billion. We're expecting a 6% increase um, to rise over to 253 billion. Um, and a number of firms okay, is Kevin. approximately. That's it, that's three minutes, it's not very long. Okay, thanks. Okay, Bill? Yeah, Kevin, you, you started out good. I think where it kind of went off the rails, you spent uh, quite a bit of time on the problem in various ways. You, you, you transitioned to the solution, then you kind of transitioned back to the problem with the why now, which had a lot of problem statements in it. Um, so you got to find a way to, to march through that. And in, in terms of the, uh, uh, the problem there, you could have just bulleted on, on one slide. I think you had several statements in there. You could have just bulleted those and basically talked around those and then moved right on into your solution. And then, of course, you, you ran out of time, so we really didn't see what happened with the business, and et cetera. Chuck? Yeah, um, I would agree with the previous comments relative to the problem statement. Problems are important, but you could have summarized those. And um, I, I think you also need to practice presenting so you don't have a lot of ums and, and you get more content into the space allowed. Um, but the thing I would suggest to you is I'm an advisor to a company called Better GIS that has uh, a, a digital view of assets in the ground like pipelines. Contact me and I'll sell you more and see if it makes sense for you to connect with them. Chuck, do you want to put your email in the chat for him? Sure, I'll do that. Thank you. Uh, Logan, you said you were going to be ready on, on one of these. Are, is this the one or is it the next one? <laughs> this is the one. So, uh, Kevin, I, I just to reiterate the points I said. You spent too much time on the solution. You started off strong uh, talking about, you know, getting the, you know, pain points solved, the documentation, connecting all the links, if you will. So streamline that. Um, I, and also on the deck itself, the structure of the deck, as you guys, as you were going through it, I know that it was only seven minutes, but you need to work on your how the deck is. There's way too much wording on there. Um, if even though it's only 30 minutes, if, when you start to build a uh, pitch, it's 10 minutes, a uh, proper pitch, um, you need to streamline the information that's on the deck because part of, you're going to have too many people trying to read that and they're getting the, the pitch itself is going to get lost in the details of them trying to read versus you delivering the pitch itself. Uh, so streamline, prioritize and simplify your problem solution and make that appear on the deck. Also, one little thing I noticed is your Tam Sam Sam was in persons versus dollars. Investors don't care initially about how many people or how many uh, potential people are in the market as much as they care about the investment and the market size. So that's okay to have information have, but convert your TAM SAM SOM to dollars. 
so that we as investors, when we look at it, we intuitively get what the potential return on investment, what the investment opportunity is. So put it in dollars there. Other than that, start off strong, you'll, you'll get there. Um, it's actually really kind of a neat concept and you and I have talked about it at length as well. So uh, keep working at it. Okay, Kevin, so, so my input is similar to Logan's in that uh, those slides are much too busy and heavy with words. We'd rather see pictures and then have to be listening to what you're saying. Uh, and I would also caution you that you don't wanna say every single word that you have on your slides. It's not going to be interesting enough. Um, if the problem, you did take two minutes, that's two thirds of your time was spent on the problem. And if the problem is not like a bleeding artery type of problem, if it's something that's like a broken capillary, um, that's not a serious enough problem that needs to be solved. Your problem is understandable. I know it's a big problem. So if you just showed us some pictures that describe like the mess of the, the paperwork that's happening or the way that things get delayed because deliveries are not made to um, the project with the parts that are needed for that day or the fines that happen because there's non-compliance with an inspector. Okay, so we just need to make it so that it's more easily graspable and you should be able to get that done in about 15 seconds. And then you can move on to how big is the market, how your solution combines a lot of other solutions that are out there and is easier to deal with. And I'm not sure who your customer is. Is it a utility company or is it a construction company? So we need to know that kind of upfront. <laughs> okay. Um, so this is a process, so don't give up. It's just, you have to keep working at it. Practice, refine, and work on it some more. All right, um, I think we have lost Andrew. I looked for him in the panelist section and didn't find him. I don't know if he might be over in the other section. I don't think so. All right, so then Noel, this is our last pitch for the evening. And then Logan, I hope you'll be ready to tell us what happens next Tuesday, because I don't remember. <laughs> okay, so Noel, are you ready? Am I sharing the right screen? Can you see? <laughs> Looks good. Yes, we see it. Whenever you're ready. Okay, perfect. So I'm very excited to tell you guys more about Alt Casa because it is a passion of mine to democratize multiple home ownership. Not just because it'd be fun to live in Italy, but because I've lived in multiple places in my life. I've lived all over the world and the world becomes a better place the more we get outside of our bubble and get to know other people and other cultures. So hi, I'm Noelle. Um, the biggest, most impressive thing I guess I've done is I've already built a billion dollar company, but for somebody else, which is the real kicker because I love building stuff and now I want to build something big for myself. The big problem is being a tourist is expensive. Like we all love to travel, but staying in Airbnb and hotels, you're basically paying someone else's mortgage and making them rich. With timeshares, there's, it's a depreciating asset and you own less than 2% equity. And then mortgages are super expensive. Home prices are rising faster than income, which means it's really hard to own multiple homes, especially if you're not utilizing them all the time. So simply, this is how, oops, yeah. So simply, this is how we do it. We buy residential homes, we fraction them and uh, price them out. We list each fraction, we sell the shares, then we maintain and manage each of those fractions and the entire house as a whole. So we're looking to create a totally new asset class where you have consistent access, the house is yours for the same time every single year. It's an actual investment, it's deeded and titled allotments, you actually own equity in the home and you can live and work from anywhere. You only pay for the time that you're using the house. So who wants this? Is it just me and Kelly? Well, we asked and we received over 2000 organic survey responses in 24 hours. 50% of the respondents already work remote and 68% said they will continue to be remote after the pandemic. And as you can see, they literally think about this all the time are actively trying to solve it. And almost all of them opted into learning more about Al Casa. So the market size is massive, mostly because real estate is the biggest market in the world. So if you look at 100% of the timeshare market, a quarter of the Airbnb market and 60% of the non-rental vacation home market, You'll see that this is a 1.46 trillion adjacent market in the US. That's 51.1 million active users just in these markets. And right now there are zero comparable companies that are solving this specific problem in our price range for our customer. 
So we have a bunch of comparisons of on who our competition is, but if you quickly look at this, you'll see that there isn't anyone else offering this allotted time, same time every year. So if you wanna spend every 4th of July in Montana, you got it. If you wanna spend every holiday in Vegas, you got it in perpetuity. So we're gonna make money in three key ways, home sales and resell, the alt cost of marketplace and lending. Right now we're raising a million dollars for an 18 month operational runway. We also have um, SPVs underneath our umbrella, which is where we raise home, uh, we raise money to buy a property. Mm -hmm. Time's it. Sorry, three minutes is tricky, but I tried. Okay, all right. Do you wanna just go to your contact slide, Bill? Or you can, we'd rather see your face, that's good. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, Noel. Um, actually, very good. I thought um, you got the problem—the multiple homes, people wanting to go out and explore—is what I got out of it, which was which is really cool. Uh, the Airbnb problem, you know, the 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 expense problem, being able to control your your experience by actually owning a slice of something, similar to timeshares, but not the same. Uh, the market was well was well presented. The only thing that that confused me, you had zero companies, and I was trying to connect it back to the market, and it got a little confusing when I when I was was looking at that. Um, and then on the the competition slide, all that stuff was great information. The only problem was it wasn't matching up to what you were saying. So I was looking for what you were saying on the slide and just couldn't find it. In other words, I was trying to focus on the slide and I stopped listening, which mm -hmm. is a bad thing. So it's kind of either the slide construction needs to be different or your verbiage needs to be different. Business you covered, the ask we saw towards the very end and you hit the team. So overall, it's, it's pretty good. Very good. Chuck, do you have any feedback? Yeah, let me disagree with Bill. Yeah. Um, I thought this was very clear. I think you just really nailed it in terms of clarity of your presentation, what you were trying to do. What I would have liked to have heard was what does it mean for the customer in terms of their financial commitment? And then what does it mean for the investor in terms of the opportunity for them? You didn't have the time or to present that, but uh, I think you're gonna get a lot of attention uh, by people asking for more information. Good. Okay, Logan. Thank you, Chuck. I uh, well done, Noel. You know that, that that was a great pitch. You went just to, you uh, might have gotten just a tad over, but overall, really well done pitch. Hit all your main points. Um, just, just what kind of Chuck said. You know what is a little bit more on kind of the business model. Well, one, I think you think you saw it. It might have just gone too fast for me to catch it. But about how Alt Costa is making money, whether it's that kind of percent, you know, the percentage of fees structured there. But also, what is the investor, or sorry, not the investor, the customer? You know, what does that process look like? Is it a sub subscription? Are they are they they're paying for that equity? Like, and what kind of size of tranches would that be? And again, those might be things that you can't really fit into a three minute. But if you can, and if you can practice that, then that's always excellent. But really, well done. Uh, good, good, great pitch. Well, Noel, I felt like you were trying to do a five minute pitch in three minutes. <laughs> Yeah, you are correct. I was like, edit, edit. Oh, shoot. Now I don't have competition. Oh, shoot. Now I don't have. And I was like, I know they're going to call me out on not having stuff. So, yeah, you're right. I did. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. But you do seem to be a quite practiced presenter. So I'm sure that there were good tips that were picked up by the, the rest of the folks in the room. So good job overall, except for <laughs> trying to smush that muffin into three minutes. Okay, uh, so that concludes our first pitch practice and pitch deconstruction. You see, we didn't bite anybody's head off. It's not something that you have to be afraid of. So we encourage you all to sign up next time and do practice your one minute. I, I can't tell you enough that if you just write it out and practice it and practice it five times before you even time yourself, get yourself about a hundred words and then practice it five times, then time yourself and then you'll know what to do, okay. At Neil, what are their names? Oh. oh, okay, I'm sorry. You guys are having a private chat there. 
Okay, so Chuck, thank you for joining us tonight and Bill. And Logan, can you take us home by telling, actually Chuck, unmuted. Go ahead, Chuck. Oh no, thank you. I thought it was a fun experience. I wish everyone good luck in their enterprises. Thank you. Chuck is a hell of a guy. And if he invited you to contact him, you should do that or you're just plain dumb. Okay, so Logan. Absolutely. So uh, again, everyone, thank you for turning, tuning in. And I know that some of you are probably teetering on the edge to pitch. Please pitch, highly encourage. And we're going to have a number of pitch days coming up in the next several weeks. But next week's session will actually be uh, preparing for due diligence. Uh, last week, we had Bill Slickover talk about kind of the financial things that you need to think about and the technical and financial risks when you go into due diligence and that investors will call you out on or be looking at. The next session will be with Leif Martin, who is the director for Trove Center for Entrepreneurship. He's an entrepreneur himself, a businessman, but he will be talking about the process and the things that you need to be preparing for when you have an investor group that is maybe interested in funding your venture about what kind of documentation looks like? What does that process look like? What are the key risks and assumptions you need to take in place? So this will be a really important one for you all to tune into. Uh, and we will be sending out that information. And also uh, tomorrow I will be sending out information um, about, you know, we'll be sending out the recording of this session. So you guys can, those of you that pitch, you can uh, hear yourself, watch it, you know, and see your pitch again, see the whole process again. So you're prepared for next time. Uh, we will also, I'll also uh, curate a few materials for you guys that are some resources that might help you be, uh, get your, your pitches on, uh, on, on point, in particular your one and three, and then of course your 10 minute, which would be the, 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 the bread and butter of, uh, of pitch days. So I'll send those with that recording and some, re, uh, and some additional resources. And of course, the link to the next pitch day next week on the 16th. Uh, thank you all for joining us. And we are looking forward to having you next week as well.